Hello, my name is Scott Steele. My job title and position is a PhD candidate studying and, and investigating space law, governance, astrobiology and planetary protection. My day-to-day -day basis is considering the legal implications of everything to do with space, whether that's the Mars missions, whether that's space debris, it generally varies. My current role is obviously to look through the lens of international law to discover the implications of space governance through the planetary protection policy and really to see what the future is of governance. I got into space law in 2015. Um, it was a year three option module and I was like, I'm interested in space, I like it. So I thought, why not? I had to try and understand international law, which wasn't taught. So for my master's, I then went and done international public law to understand the implications of what international law has to do with space law. Um, and which led me to find the Auburn University for the international environmental context of planetary protection in space law, governance and astrobiology. Well, space is continuous. We've been operating in space for literally decades and we really haven't fulfilled what we should have now. Space is, is infinite. Although we can say that we understand some of space, we, we literally haven't understood it. 1%. We have missions to Mars, we have missions to the moon, we have satellites. We have telecommunication issues. We have we have the International Space Station. It's a minefield. And when you write and read and research about something which has no end, it's very difficult to be wrong. But it's also very, very easy to be original. So within the next five years, I think with, with other colleagues and obviously myself, We'd be writing around about space governance. We'll also be writing about the implications of the Mars missions in the future. So I think it, it, it is going to be based along the laws, what governance we can try and get in, something like the Artemis Accords, the, to look at the sustainability of space, the environmental impact of what we're doing on, in space. 50 years, um, I think it's very much going to be dependent on um, economics, technology, and also science. The law is very reactive, so unless something happens, generally, the law doesn't react, which is an unfortunate and frustrating thing. So it is going to be a very interesting time within space law um, and also governance and astrobiology, biology, especially when Mars missions come back and we continue to push the boundaries. I think it's without a doubt it has to be um, the biosecurity and planetary protection issues of the Mars sample return. The fact is that we've sent something to Mars and then we're bringing samples back, not of the moon, but of Mars. The, the, the excitement and the ingenuity all with that is just so complex, so thrilling, because I get the challenge and the, the biosecurity, I can write about it, I can write about future planning of planetary protection. And it is also something that's really topical. Whether space law catches up or not, we still have to deal with what happens to um, the, the samples, who gets um, intellectual property rights of that? Is it the, for the heritage of all humanity? No one knows. So the geopolitical is always on my mind. It is always a consideration to what the issues may be in the future. I think the concerns among that really is what laws are going to be transparent in the future? Where do we go and how do we do it? That's something for us to do.